Hello everyone. In this uh, video lecture, we're going to discuss the test on residual outliers. We're going to use the example that we discussed in class dealing with trilateration. So uh, just to uh, make a review of that, uh, here's the situation of uh, a trilateration. In this case is uh, quadrilateral. And trilateration means that uh, we are measuring the distances between these points, these four points here forming the quadrilateral, uh, in a two-dimensional coordinate system. So we have the uh, a series of plane distances, L sub i, and uh, each one of these sides has been observed six times. So we have observations L1, uh, we have observations L2, observations L3, observations L4, and observations L5. In this quadrilateral, we are considering that points A and B are points of known coordinates. They are control points. Therefore, we know their coordinates, their two-dimensional coordinates, x and y. x is basically uh, easting and y is northing. And we also have this deviation of these coordinates. We want to determine the coordinates of points c and d. In the adjustment, in the uh, exercise that we did in class, uh, we used a precision, a different precision for EDM. Uh, for the sake of this exercise here in our discussion, we are going to consider that we use an EDM that has a precision of 4 centimeters plus 2 ppm. So we go and uh, we go and run the adjustment. Since we are concerned with outliers, Let's have a look at the residual outliers. As we know and we discussed in class, the, one of the characteristics of the residuals is that they have zero mean. So we expect that the residual values will all vary, vary um, around the mean value that in, in this case is zero. This plot shows the residuals, the adjusted residuals. Uh, they are the center points in here. And uh, we have the error bars that indicate the standard deviation associated with each one of these residuals. So here we have residual for observation L1, observation L2, observation L3, L4, L5, and then we have another one, L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, and uh, then another series, so, so on and so forth, until we arrive at the 30th observation, uh, which is observation L5. And we can see that uh, the residuals, uh, they reflect the observations. They are stochastic. The observations are stochastic. So are the residuals. Now, one thing that uh, call our attention is that these observation here, observation number 29, this is basically observation, one of the observations L4, it is indeed falling far away from the set of all the other residuals. Would that be an outlier? Well, it seems so. How can we go and say that this is an outlier? The other thing is, would there be any other outlier in, in here? Uh, apparently not, but we never know. So let's, uh, let's uh, build the confidence region uh, and then do the test on outliers. So we are going to do the so-called standardized test on residual outliers because we are actually using standardized residuals. And uh, let us 
test these residuals using a 95% confidence, confidence level, or 1 minus alpha equals to 0 0.95. This is the expression that we're going to use. Uh, we're going to test each one of the adjusted residuals, uh, test if it falls within a particular interval that is defined by its uh, own standard deviation, minus or plus the standard deviation, multiplied by a value, a abscissa value, that we are going to draw from the normal distribution. We are going to use, of course, a standardized normal distribution, meaning it has zero mean and one standard deviation, and uh, we are going to have one minus alpha over two confidence level, because this is a two-tailed test. Uh, in general, the um, standard deviations, they are around 37 centimeters. It suffices for us if we compute the value, uh, the abscissa value of the normal distribution with uh, uh, 1 minus alpha over 2 is uh, 0 0.975, uh, it is 1.96. So essentially, uh, this left-hand side of our confidence region is going to be minus the standard deviation multiplied by 1.96 and plus the standard deviation multiplied by 1.96. The standard deviation here is the standard deviation that we got, get from the covariance matrix of the residuals, of the estimated residuals. This gives us a confidence region, and this confidence region uh, is going to be basically plus or minus 0 0.073. So we're going to test whether each one of these estimated residuals lie within this interval. Uh, if they do, the residual uh, is not an outlier with a confidence level of 95%. Otherwise, it is going to be flagged as an outlier with a significance level of 5%. So since we computed the confidence region, we can actually draw the confidence region here we have the plus 73 centimeters minus 73 centimeters. So what calls our attention, of course, is that this observation here, the 29th observation, um, is outside the confidence region. Interesting that uh, we have other two residuals outside the confidence region. This is the fourth observation. And this is the 22nd observation. We will have to flag these three residuals. We have to go back to the observation set. We have to remove these observations from the input and rerun the adjustment. Uh, after running the adjustment, we can go back to the estimated residuals. So here we have residuals for the fourth observation, for the 22nd observation, 29th observation. And uh, here we have the confidence uh, region. We can clearly say that the test fails at 5% significance level. The test for residuals 4, 22nd, and 29th. These residuals are residual outliers. We can go now and rerun the adjustment. We'll remove the observations for 22 and 29 and run again. And uh, what we are going to look at is going to be the adjusted residuals. These are the adjusted residuals. We have no information here for observation 4 observation 22, observation 29, they have been removed. Our residuals now will lie, all of them, lie inside 
the confidence region. Therefore, they're all they are not outliers. Now let us look at the results of these two adjustments. Uh, the adjustment without removing the residuals and the adjustment after we did remove the residuals. In, in other words, in essence, we remove the observations, the corresponding observations. I mean, what's the consequence of that in the parameters that we estimate? Given the uh, known coordinates, uh, we have the adjustment of all the, uh, the eight parameters. So it's a weighted constraint. So we are, we are also estimating corrections to the known coordinates. So with the outlier, uh, these are the results. They are in this uh, column number two. And we can compute the difference between the known coordinates and the known coordinates uh, estimated with the outlier. Uh, we can see that the difference here is, uh, well, it's close to two centimeters, which is uh, uh, basically the standard deviation of the coordinates. That's fine. But then on table, on, uh, on column three, the outliers have been removed. So the first four observations are new, param new values for the known parameters. And then if we get these new values estimated uh, after removing the outliers, minus the known, uh, known coordinates, we can see that uh, there was improvement. Uh, I mean, the, uh, the final estimates uh, of the known stations, they are closer to their known values. If you look at the standard deviations, we can see that uh, there is no difference. I'm just showing here the, the, the input values uh, for the known coordinates, uh, and the, uh, the final values of standard deviation for all eight parameters. The first four are known coordinates. We can see that they are within the, uh, their uh, previous standard deviation, which is okay. And here, uh, the last four, we have the um, uh, standard deviation for the coordinates uh, related to C and D. There was no difference in the conversions. Okay, they uh, both adjustments took the same number of steps. Now the a posteriori variance factor, and that's something that is uh, is interesting for us to discuss. It shows a considerable difference. Without the liars, we had 3.174, and uh, well, clearly, if we consider the a priori variance factor equals to one they're not statistically equivalent. And if we remove the outlier, after removing all three outliers, the adjustment resulted in 0 0.0506, which is indeed a lower value. So uh, what does it mean? Well, we can think that the a priori variance factor computed having the outliers removed is low. Uh, and what that may indicate, it indicates that the variances of the covariance matrix of the observations are too large. Uh, in other words, the given precision of the EDM is too pessimistic. As a matter of fact, uh, that indicates that the precision of the EDM, EDM is better than what was given. If we try again, if we do the adjustment once more without the, uh, the outliers, but this time we are going to assign a uh, precision for the observations equals to three centimeters plus or minus two ppm. The outcome of this adjustment is a, a posteriori variance factor equals to 0 0.9. Okay, 0 0.9 is close much closer to one, and uh, we are not testing it, but uh, that would be something interesting to do. So, uh, which means that uh, indeed the variances, they were indicating a precision that was worse than the actual precision of the EDM. Uh, the other thing that uh, is interesting to realize in this case, that the standard deviation of the parameters, they got slightly smaller, okay? And uh, the difference 
As a matter of fact, is at the millimeter level. Another thing that is interesting to realize is that the solution converged a bit faster. That's all I have for this uh, uh, example. Uh, so see you next time.